All right, welcome <laughs> to the Standard Popper Show. Hello, that everybody. was amazing. I know it was. If that doesn't get a standing ovation from everybody listening, they don't have ears. Then, why, have they, then why would they be listening? <laughs> why would... I don't know. That's crazy. Anyway, today... We're talking about the leagues and some standard popper and also the gauntlet. So, this week in standard popper, SPDC, November 16th, 14 players. Thank you for 100% reporting. I love it. Mostly normal stuff except, uh, Semic? What? So let's take a look at this. This is the winner. Sedge Scorpion, Death Touch. I'll tell you what, would have been a big player if I had it in my deck that I played in the league this week, but we'll get to that. Uh, Nyad, Disciple, Species, Wall, Asp, uh, Font of Fortunes, Divination. Basically, it's Splashing Black for Unmake the Graves. Which, which is a super powerful card. Yes, it is. It's pretty good. It's good stuff. Um, pretty normal sideboard. Um, again, another extra Unmake the Graves in case it turns out to be your linchpin. Uh, opening Hand. Island, Forest, Island, Sedge Scorpion, Death Toucher. I'm almost snap keeping based on the Death Toucher. Yeah, just right there, I have a Forest and a Sedge Scorpion. I'm good. Yep. I like it. And Divination, draw some more cards. Awesome. Invasive Species has become one of my new favorites. And look at this. Oh, Wall. interaction. Oh, snaps. I'm snap keeping this. Yeah, that's a cube. You can cast no, almost know. everything in your hand. It's great. So let's look at the next six. Thornwood Falls, love it. Voyage's End, not bad. Gives you some tempo there. Super good against Heroic. Oh, yeah. Crippling Chill, another good thing against the large creatures in Voltron. And I like how in your sample you mise the one Crippling Chill in the deck. <laughs> yep. Hey, it's all about statistics. It is. <laughs> And another divination. Look at this. This is nothing but gas, y'all. Well, you kind of get a little flood, but I don't know. Peel from reality as well. Again. Peel is really good in the deck. Um, bouncing the species, the walls. You can actually slow lock your opponent out with the wall and a pill. Yeah. Um, so it's actually really effective. So You certainly um, can. One thing I noticed, um, 61 cards. In the deck. Yeah. Um, did the math. Um, not necessarily sure why um, there wasn't a cut made. I mean, he went 5-1, so again, results were there. <laughs> right. Um, but still... Yeah, if You know, something like that can maybe be an oversight. but Or, or maybe, hey, yeah. 61, no big deal. Um, I've got a lot of card draw, blah, 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 but... <laughs> still always makes me a little uneasy. Yep, I hear you. But still, this is a great opening hand and a great next mm-hmm. six. Love it. Absolutely. All right. Here we're going to talk about the league. We started the league this week, and we both played our matches with differing results. Here's, yep, here's what I played. Gary's Cruise. Um, it's Golgari splashing for <gasps> Abomination of Gadul and... Treasure Cruise. Um, the thing about this deck is there's lots of interesting plays, but you know it has the four disowned ancestors, which is pretty good. Highland game for some for some early beats and um, gains you some life. Seder Wayfinder to put stuff in the yard. Disciple of Phoenix to attack their hand. Shaman of Spring to draw. Gary for the life gain. Abomination of Gadul because that's a over the top beater. Flesh to dust. Scout the borders also put stuff into the yard. And treasure crews take advantage of that. And then sideboard has the interesting thing on the sideboard is Mardu Skull Hunter, which I never was able to bring in effectively, but it's pretty good, especially with the with the raid trigger. Um, here's an opening hand sample. We got a jungle hollow island Seder. Highland Game, Scout the Borders, Shaman of Spring, and Treasure Cruise. Right here, you have enough to fuel your Treasure Cruise. 
you're going to throw in three, possibly, you know, hopefully just three cards from Seder and up to four cards from Scout the Borders. Um, and you can cast that Treasure Cruise. Here's my problem. Um, when I play this, I mean, it looks like a decent opening hand. Uh, this guy and this guy. There were times, late game, that I was afraid to cast them because I, you, this deck digs through the library so fast at lightning speed that when it got late game, had I, I had three Wayfinders in my hand at one time um, because if I cast them, I would have lost on decking myself. So maybe there's a little too much going into the yard, especially since there's only Treasure Crews using Delve. Right, it doesn't. It doesn't have any of the creature return spells in it either. Nope. Yeah, you're not getting much back. You're solely in it for the delve. And huh. it's, it's that seems to really all spell. in. It is for that. I think it was too much. I'm not going to play this one again. I mean, it made top I mean, four, but my 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 question, um, just looking over, why shaman of spring over divination? Just for a body, because right, there's not enough bodies. I, Four yeah. mana, though. Yeah, I agree. Which I think is what you're going to talk about in the next slide. Yeah, this. And here, here's the thing. Yes, there's four one drops and eight two drops and four three drops, but the majority of your spells that you're casting are four and up. And why is that bad? Disdainful Stroke. Because everyone who's splashing blue, because everyone is splashing blue for at least Treasure Cruise, will be bringing in the uh, disdainful stroke against you. Because your the spells that really matter are the ones that are four and above. You know, Disciple of Phoenix, Gary, Abomination, Treasure Cruise. Because your one through three aren't going to win you the game nope. in this deck. Not at all. I mean, Disowned Ancestor is very cool, but um, you're only growing that if you're at a board stall. Because you can't afford your O4 to be tapped against any kind of aggro. So, anyway, that's what I did. Um, I lost one two to a uh, uh, Azorius build that was a lot of hexproof, so my kill spells were useless. And also, when someone cast Rise of Eagles, um, my spot removal only gets rid of one. So, hmm. Seems pretty disheartening when I have to do that. And unlike Big B's deck, there is no tempo. Right. Because you feel a lot better voyage ending one half of a Rise of Eagles and scrying than you do casting a five casting cost. Right, flesh to dust. <laughs> removal spell. Um, so, uh, and really, I mean, your deck and his deck are kind of like two sides of a coin where his was a lot more streamlined splashing for black mm -hmm. and yours is a lot more funky splashing for blue. Yeah, this um, curve I don't think will be sustainable in the league. No, I mean, just if you made a change and maybe dropped the Scout the Borders and brought in Elvish Mystics. No, that could help. That I mean, that could definitely help power out um, the the fours and fives a little bit faster. Um, but I don't know. I mean, I don't know about putting a lot of time into you know making this deck better. I don't know if Pie Master is even playing it anymore. And also, this is the same deck that Baba ran, and he won. So, huh, who knows? Uh, Baba. When he played, though, he played against a heroic deck. Yeah, and his spot removal was awesome. Yeah, uh, heroic has a real problem. I mean, one for winning against a heroic deck is often you get the creature plus all the tricks that your opponent has burned into that creature, and yeah. that helps out a whole bunch, too. So Sure does. All right, now this is the deck that you're playing. The Jeskai, you call it Raka Storm. Raka. Mm -hmm. I go back to the Apocalypse. All right. So this is my deck. Um, 
It is still splash, splashing blue because um, I like the cruise. And really the Wind Scout um, having flying in prowess um, is kind of a game winner just by itself. Um, I've put a lot of time working in on the mana curve, um, but it's got uh, kind of the one drops that you would grow accustomed to in a heroic deck. Um, three of Chrome and Crusaders, uh, four Seder Hoplites. Um, it's got Titan Strengths, um, which is a card that I had slept on until a couple of Pro Tours ago. Um, but it is first turn Seder Hoplite, second turn Titan Strength it. That's four points of damage on the second turn. No, five. Five? Yeah. yeah. Insanity. Plus a Scry. It's um, awesome. And Defiant Strike is another card I had slept on. Um, oh, but Defiant one Strike mana, is great. One mana cycle, 1-1 one, one plus a counter. Um, I was running Wingsting Riders in the deck, but the double white is too prohibitive. Yeah. Um, so those got cut. Um, plus, you really don't want that many three drops. Some are only running 22 lands. Um Dragon Mantle is the only enchantment that survived because the pump ability on it is amazing. Um, and it's the a cantrip only, too, right? It is a cantrip. Um, yeah. er, those in the strikes are cantrips. The treasure cruises draw extra cards. Um, the Titan Strength Scry. Um, but like the Feet and the God's Willings are both um, one-for-ones. Um, the Wind Scout's been great. The student has been great. Um, I, the Crusader's the only one that I haven't really gotten any huge results out of. And that's simply because I often will play it on like game two and game three as the first creature. So it can draw the early game removal and then move into the creature like a hoplite on like the third turn. Mm hmm. And then that early game removal is gone, and there's not a ton of it in the format. So I can start growing my Hoplite right away. Right. And it's amazing. That's cool. Um, so because the Crusader, if left unchecked, out of control. Super quick. So before you flip the slide, the only game I've lost has been a game <laughs> where I drew burn and creatures and no tricks. <laughs> so flip wow. the slide. <laughs> and that's this hand. So I would, I would and no tricks. Mulligan the living hell out of this hand because <laughs> if one of these was a defiant strike um, or a titan strength or even a god's willing, totally keepable. Right. But you really have to have tricks in your opening hand to win. And I'm running 15 tricks and 16 creatures, so you wouldn't think that would be unreasonable. But it does happen. Uh, so not this isn't a great opening hand. Um, but I did go 2-1 against Make Peace on Earth. Um, and he was running, is it Control? He is running the Dr. Chris build. Ah, okay. um, so I just went way over the top on him. Like I had a 5-5 five, five Seder Hoplite. Um, on turn four, wow. and he cast the he tapped out to cast the Minotaur token uh, two, thing, and then the next turn I double Titan strength them my Hoplite, mm -hmm. and that was it. Wow, because that made um a like a fourteen something, <laughs> and That's that crazy. was it. Yeah, I scooped he scooped and. Like, he won that one game because I kept the opening hand just like this. And I'm like, never again. I will mulligan, and I will do better. So Crazy, man. Um, yeah, no, it was great, though. Um, so it's uh, only my fourth win in the last three leagues. So <laughs> Yay. Yay. So. All right, and here is a perfect example of a type of... I think this kind of curve will win the will win the league straight up, just from what I've seen. Because you're going to have stuff that has really high casting costs put up against decks like this, 
with a really low casting cost average. And yeah, and I mean, the deck automatically really shuts down the Stainful Stroke. Yep. Um, it ha- It's still susceptible to negate and nullify, but it does pack enough creatures to get around nullify, especially since most of the creatures only cost one or two, so casting multiples in one turn is not hard. Um, anytime an opponent taps out for Rise of Eagles or... Um, I can't remember the name of it now. Hasty Minotaurs. Oh, yeah, Flurry of Horns. Flurry of Horns. You have God's Willing. You have you have Feet of Strength. Um, both of those basically say target creature is unblockable and gets stronger um, a lot of the time. Mm-hmm. So um, I like it. I don't know if I'm going to run it next week. Uh, or for yeah next week because the matches don't go up until Friday, right. um, but um, I'm continuing to kind of tinker with the build. Um, this is my third version of it um, now. So, but yeah, no, it's a lot of fun. I won, lost the first game um, really slowly because that's what the as a control deck does. Right. Won the second game, turn six, and the third game, turn five. Um, so it's definitely not a mid-range deck, um, and I have yet to cast a treasure cruise. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, I just haven't had enough stuff go into the graveyard. Yeah, a lot um, of people so are holding off Disdainful Stroke and cast treasure cruise. Just FYI on that. Oh yeah, no, but I mean, if that's the only thing they're using their Disdainful Strokes for, and they leave them in going into game two and game three. Yeah. That's really four dead slots in the deck that really don't do anything. So I can't feel bad about that. Right. Plus, um, like, anytime I play against blue, um, I've been signing out the three casting cost prowess flyer yeah, and, was, signing yeah. In, yeah. and signing in three negates. That makes sense. Yeah, so I have a little more... Um, help out with that so yeah no it's been fun um uh so if you want a fun quick <laughs> win sort of deck this is a good deck to try out yeah i'll have links to both these decks in the show notes so just look below look deep below dun, dun, no. dun. What? just into the comment into the show notes <laughs> okay <laughs> all right one last thing before we talk about the gauntlet again, F and M, now's the time. Do it. Do it. Do it now. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. You can. You know, I've said this before. It's great for. It's great to play. Great to learn. And I'll help you out. And oh. and I went looking at different online uh, paper card sellers. Yes. Common sets. Mm-hmm. Super affordable. Oh, Common yeah. play sets. Like, you can go and get all of Standard delivered to you by, like, Kate Fair Games or one of those big shops for, like, 10 bucks. That's pretty ridiculous. And you get a whole format out of that. <laughs> it's amazing. It, like, it's, it's pretty cool. You can also, if you go to, if you're online, you go to the bulk bots you can get the same thing a complete playset of all standard is like two tickets yeah it's ridiculous it's and that, that, that's if you have nothing so yeah it's super super affordable and everybody should look into it and again i'll support as much as i can and when we say all of standard we mean even the cards that you're never going to play with right so, so. Van- vanilla creatures you could just leave out. But a lot of them just have those bulk sets as a set that you can buy. Yeah, and it's awesome. Yep, so. it's very good. Okay, well, let's talk about the gauntlet. Well, I guess Maybe we're... we should get Dan on the line. Yeah, I'll try to find Dan. Let me, let me dial him up. I'm going to see if I can get Dan on the phone. Dan, are you with us? No. No. 
Dang it. Okay, I am with you. Oh, now he is. Whew. I feel better now. <laughs> Hello, Dan. Sam and I have been talking Hi. about all manner of standard popper. Just thought we should talk about some gauntlet now. Gauntlet. Gauntlet. Well, uh, I played some popper matches. You played a few. Yes, you did. <laughs> yes, I think I'm up to 270 now. Oh, my gosh. Something wow. Like that. That's an insane amount of popper matches. And you recorded uh, them all, too. Awesome. Yes. <laughs> there are only 27 decks left after round four, which mm. finished uh, right before this. Uh, so it's time for the vote back. The vote back is happening on MTGO Library. Yeah. I'm sure Brennan will include the link. Oh, yes. Vote back link will be included. I have already cast my vote. I want everyone else to do the same. Everyone has one vote. And I will take the three decks that gets the most votes and bring them back into the gauntlet. So we will start round five on November 23rd. You have to vote uh, on November 22nd at the latest. And yeah. then we will have 30 decks going into round five. That will be cool. It's a nice even number. I like that. How many? Yeah, and that is more than there were in the second round of the last popping Gauntlet. <laughs> That's exactly what I was about to ask. How many were in the second round of the last one? Like 17 or something crazy? 24, I think. 24, okay. Yeah. Mm. I think I barely managed to get the winning record. <laughs> it was like 24, 23 or 25, 22. Oh my gosh. That's crazy. But now we have plenty of decks. <laughs> oh yeah. We started off with a huge field. Now it's down to this. Um, I will say right off the bat, last episode, I wanted Beast down to do good, but um, as we've learned so many times before, the gauntlet is a, is a cruel mistress. Unforgiving <laughs> beast of a format, yes. Yes. Yeah. Huh. So, no more Beast down. I'm pretty sad. It can be voted back. It can be voted back. I uh, there's so many good decks. I think deserve a second chance. It's hard to pick your favorite, but um, one of the actually I as much as I liked Beast Down, I went ahead and I voted Illusory Tricks back. Oh, that's what I want to vote it back. It's and I've I've not I'm not voted yet, but I am gonna vote for Trinket, um, because oh. it's maybe not the best deck in the format, but I think. I enjoy watching Dan play Trinket pretty much more than any other deck that he plays. Um, so um, that's going to be my vote. I put a lot of thought into it, but Trinket is just Dan personified in a deck, I think. So. <laughs> well, both of those have a fairly good chance of coming back. Yeah, I think they're quite popular. Um, I think Trix is in the lead right now. Oh really? Oh cool. Yes. Yay! I haven't I haven't counted. I, I cast my vote and then just left it to fate after that. I didn't want to I didn't want to vote count or I might get depressed. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Still four days left. Still plenty of time. This will go up um, tomorrow and there'll be three days left. But still, that's plenty of time for all of you to get out there and start voting back your favorite decks. Um, yes. Let's see. We let's had talk about. Uh, yeah. Oh, sorry, you were saying. <laughs> I was about to say we had some casualties that were kind of unexpected this round, but there they are. Um, I guess which what deck did you not expect to go out this round, or do you basically have have an understanding of any deck can leave at any time? Yeah, I, um, there are, if there are decks that I can beat 80% of the field with in, uh, in the tournament practice room, then there's still 20% chance of going out at any time. So yep. no one is safe. That is very true. But yeah. there were some surprises. I didn't think elves would die. Yeah, I, I feel like I tempted fate too much with that one. Because you're like, oh, what should I play next? I'm like, oh, play elves. You'll never lose with elves. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> and you go up against a deck that just seemed to have elves number. 
I don't know. Uh, yes, I think uh, <laughs> any blue black control deck is a nightmare for elves. Um, teachings is really bad. Yeah. Oh man, not much you can do about it. But um, there it is. Elves is gone. Delver's gone. Tricks left a while back. Um, Sam, was there any was there any deck you were particularly rooting for, but then had to watch it? Had to watch it to the bitter end. I mean, at some point, Dan, I think in the last week, he started out eight and zero, and right. then he went three and five, and then the rogue deck started to appear, and then things got really rocky. Right. Um, I, I had another win streak of six wins, I think. Yeah, like right near the end of the round, you just kind of went on a tear. Um, you had a few people scoop quick, um, which is really cool um, because a win's <laughs> a win. Um, so, no, I don't – I mean, seeing Delver go out, I think that hap- – did that happen before the last show? I can't yep. quite remember. Yeah. Um, so seeing, like, some of the top-rated decks kind of go out quick, um, I mean, it was heartbreaking to see Trinket go out um, because – I do enjoy the jack the deck quite a bit. I'm very happy that Devil's Children is somehow <laughs> like the last white weenie deck left. <laughs> yes, the white and it's still in there. Yeah, so that's really cool. Um, let's see. I'm just kind of going through the list real quick. Um, I wish the Demiri Teachings match that you played actually was a role match instead of. Um, the Delver oh, the player going, oh, I don't want to play against teachings again. <laughs> so, <laughs> yep. um, so pretty much that's it. Um, like round four kind of went down the way I thought round four would. Um, the established decks did good and the roguey decks didn't fare so well. So, yeah, it's, I guess that's why the, Top tier decks are where they are. <laughs> exactly. Uh, num- number two in the vote back right now is Croca Jund, which lost Croca to Jund. Delver. But it seems to have made an impression on people, so people Croca. want Croca Jund back. It yeah. is a pretty awesome deck. I, I agree. Any, any deck where a, a random card like Croconura can actually come in and do something good is, is pretty crazy. But what you ha- well, you, I think the, the neat thing about that and why, even though they got beat by Delver, it seems kind of ready to defend itself, is you have that one little uh, three-mana card, the uh, Croconura, that yeah. almost every other card in that deck, or every other creature, makes it a 2-4 with reach. So for three mana, you get a 2-4 with reach, which is exactly what you want against a Delver deck. Yeah, Delver went, uh, okay, I snapped that uh, attack with my Spy Golem Ninja. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, I do, do like how Project X keeps chugging along. Um, yeah, that was a dirty victory just by <laughs> beating down. <laughs> which, which is, you know, the fallback position of Project X. It really is. Yeah. Um. Like, like the scientist grab some shares and go out and beat people up. <laughs> it was very sad to see Hexproof leave, but that White Weenie token deck is incredibly hardcore. Um, yeah, it took out the set control as well. I kind of wish that we actually had like that type of build in the gauntlet. We didn't really get there because it was still in development when you were taking the decks. People the of the Sun were pretty similar. Yeah, people of the sun. I don't think was quite as all in on it as the as the token deck that exists now is though. Like it is very token heavy. Right, like, battle battle screech is battle screech is hard. I mean, yeah, you, you have you have one card that produces four flying one ones. Yep, that's nuts. And and then and it helps that. pay for your triplicate spirits. Yep. Making those basically free, um, so yeah, no, it's it's a it's crazy. Um, so let yeah, me see. Uh, th- Mana burn made it. 
Yeah, Mana Burn. What was that against a... a the Mary like Reanimator one, turn, thing? Turn roll one, yeah. Didn't that yeah. guy quit? Like, after game one or something? I think so. Yeah. Mm. Oh, well. Yeah, I thought the... um When Trinket lost, that John Tortured Existence deck was actually pretty interesting. Yeah, it was. Yeah, because people don't typically go Jun with tortured assistance. They go typically to Skullgory, so that was pretty cool to see. Did, did mean, we learn what he had red for? Um, no, I don't think he really ever played any red cards. Um, oh. Typically, I mean, the only card that I really see in Jud tortured assistance is um, the the Mog, the War Marshal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, so. Spark. Would have yeah, been Deathspark. Nice. Yeah, Deathspark would have been. I, I've discovered that you have a deck like Goblins or whatnot with Deathspark. It ends up often being more of a Deathspark deck than it does any other kind. Because what you're doing, <laughs> yes, yeah, you, you get three in there, and you have three men, and you're constantly you're deciding when things die, and at, at some point they're just. Um, you're just chaining death sparks over and over and over again, so it becomes less of a yeah a whatever build insert name here, and that death spark once you get that chain going, um, all you really care about is stuff dying, and if they're you're, so you're going to be attacking because why you want them to block because stuff will die. It's just yep. this is just exactly what you want to happen, and. Um, so I, I think there might be there might need to be a lot more graveyard hate in general that um, that we saw like, like we talked about this weekend when we were discussing your practice round with the um, uh, mono black land destruction. Yeah. Like what? But what level of um, graveyard hate is appropriate? Uh, like, David Schaffer also mentioned that Exhume Control has become better <laughs> because it had all the grave hard hate uh, from the start. So you have those right. three bogs and two spell bombs or something like that. Yeah, right. Because you want to make Exhume one-sided whenever you can. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And then you can eat treasure cruises for breakfast. <laughs> right. Because nobody's paying it for that card. It just becomes trash at that point. Yep. Yeah, you're, you're way better off with, like, uh, Think Twice if you're paying eight mana. But, yeah. Um, my head-scratching match of the, of I think, of round four was Bant Presence versus Mono Blue Tron. And while I think Mono Blue Tron is a really strong deck or a pretty decent deck in modern... Yeah. It definitely cannot hold its way in Popper. It just does not have enough um, power. It really can't keep up without red. Um, so, um, but just seeing you combo out um, to transmuting the the drift of phantasms to get the third um, presence of gone just to get <laughs> fast counters. Yeah. You're, you're just like, I'm going to stick one of these and I'm going to win immediately. <laughs> so that was pretty fun. So Yeah, that was good. We never saw Cloud of Fairies from him, did we? No, I don't nope. believe so. Mm-hmm. But so I it mean was it doesn't control from Yeah, it doesn't really fit the theme like the deck, if anything. I mean, Tron just ramps up to big mana, like do you really need to play Cloud of Fairies in it? So, you, you, it would ramp you up. You could go infinite, but you have mana. much harder yeah. time finding blue mana than familiars right. has. Yeah, and I mean familiars is the that deck in the format, I think. So yeah. uh, let's see. And then of course Squawk Rights, I believe, lost. Yeah, Squawk Rights lost to Elfs because Elfs is just really good against that type of aggro. Yeah. So, yeah, I felt, yeah, I kind of felt that well, early on we had so much debate over the even the presence of Squawk Rights in the gauntlet. I just felt like it's uh, 
I felt it was kind of hanging on by a thread. I know it did well early on, but to me, uh, that one, I just kind of, I just saw it coming. It was, it was probably the only match where I was like, yep, well, there it goes. See you later, Squawk Rights. And Squawk, <laughs> uh, Squawk's the plowshares, of course, just completely getting eaten alive by burn. Yeah. Like, it didn't yeah, I didn't play. expect that. I thought it had a pretty good burn matchup. Oh, but wow, that burn deck just was like, oh, turn four, you're dead. Turn four, you're dead. I'm sorry. It had, yeah. There was no forgiveness there. And you didn't even, like, you didn't even stumble. It just, right, but he just had, like, a really strong burn build. So. Well, yeah, the, he, the last two cards he played were, um, oh, what's the, both of you take four for two mana? Flame Rift. Yeah, Flame Rift. He's like, Flame Rift, Flame Rift. I think, yeah. I think you were at eight, he was at nine. I mean, so dealing what, eight what damage you, for four mana that? is insane, <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah that's, uh, when, when he did the first one, I was like, oh gosh, that hurts. Ah, uh, but you still have four life. Uh, oh, well, never mind. <laughs> there it went. <laughs> I just, yeah, that. That had to hurt. I haven't seen Flame Rift in a Popper build in forever, but... It is in the Burn build in the Gauntlet. Yeah, that's true. I guess I haven't, I guess I haven't seen it in the wild very often. <laughs> in the wild. Yeah. No, we, we, have a, we have a farm here at the Gauntlet. We grow things with whole grains... And we used to have a zoo. <laughs> Not anymore. Yeah, we, we lost the zoo. The zoo <laughs> went away. Oh, zoo. You and your wild macaddles. Zoo and we ran into your... Delver getting Delver draws. So. <laughs> right. Zoo and your unstableness of playing five colors in one deck in a format that can't really support it. Poor zoo. What? But uh, to be fair, it was really... The Delver unbeatable draw that like yeah. Delver Cloud of Fairy spells of the Sprite. Okay. Yeah. Oops. Yeah. Oh, I didn't want to play anything anyway. You go ahead, Delver yep. player. <laughs> it's okay. Do whatever you want to do. I'm not really here to play. Yeah. It was an accident. And then we had bugs and pigs. And it seems to have a plan to win the gauntlet. The plan is to play infect every round. <laughs> right. How, and it, then have tons of removal. <laughs> it's so crazy. Which is pretty much the exact comment that Galactic Empire... I, I don't think that's his actual name, but... Um, <laughs> no, no, that's on his birth certificate. <laughs> Galactic he, he, Empire Smith. He put up in the comments on the video, he's like, yeah, if, I, if it keeps playing in fact, I'm going to win. <laughs> uh, this is really funny. So. Uh, I don't think anybody played against Infect <laughs> except... Bugs and pigs again. So that's pretty good. That's pretty good yeah. stuff. I mean, if you got to pick your matchup, you might as well pick one that you have a hundred one hundred percent win rate against, right? Crypt oh, exactly. did uh, the other thing. It played against hexproof, which must be like its worst matchup. <laughs> it, sit yeah. around, cycle stuff while people build twenty two, twenty two, <laughs> right? <laughs> Giant this dudes. crazy Tron. The Voltron kind of guy, yeah. Yeah, so Crypt Songs was crushed by Hexproof. And Crypt Songs has that either you win, like, really, really well, or you just don't do anything and lose, <laughs> which is unfortunate. But it's never fast, so you no. sort, of, sort of want to play against the mid-range decks or the control decks. Right. And Hexproof is really bad. <laughs> Yeah, because you have a few interactions, really but fast. with hexproof you have nothing. Right. Yeah, you're not you're not targeting anything. Yeah, and then oh, well. uh, <laughs> Silhana Ledgewalker okay, can't even block. Right. Uh, so disheartening. Torture mm. Toolbox ran into is a Delver, which uh, should be fairly good for it. So it won. Yes, because the guy who put Torture Toolbox together was like. Is it Delver's a thing? So he should put some sacrifice effects in it. So <laughs> that was me, <laughs> by the way. Yeah. Well, it turns out fume spitters are good against Delver decks. Yes, they are. 
Yeah, and the uh, Fume Spitter was really great against those Infect decks, too. Oh, yes. Glistener Elf? Bye-bye. See you later. <laughs> yeah. Love yeah. those Fume Spitters. They're so awesome. They are pretty uh-huh. great cards. So what do you think about Green Grifters still being in? Um, it is awesome that it's in. Uh, I apologize for any um, horrible comments that I made about <laughs> it being a little too roguey for the gauntlet. <laughs> um, it has really handled its business very, very well since the second round. Um, so, um, yes, full of apologies I am for that. <laughs> um because I mean, it took out Delver, and I think it did it, if I remember correctly, really dramatically too. Uh, yes. This round, so like it rolled that Delver deck, so that was pretty awesome. So, mm-hmm. uh, this round was against Delver Fiend. Oh, was it against Delver Fiend? Okay, yeah. Yeah, it was last round was Delver. Yeah, so I mean, it's taking out like big explosive or top decks of the format so that's insane completely insane so yeah we raised delver Fiend. that was yeah that that was insane really crazy <laughs> <laughs> one the one thing you should never be able to do <laughs> is, yeah right race the giant um we lost the, uh, some decks to Fox. affinity it took down beast down mm-hmm and we lost Golgari under Dredge. Well, unfortunately, once uh, Affinity gets going, what it wants to get going. I think it's a very important uh, component of sideboards because oh, without a doubt, if it, you don't have three, four sideboard cards against Affinity, you have a very hard time. And it there's this something even, about playing um, playing against a deck with four fours that cost virtually nothing or nothing <laughs> sometimes. Yeah. There's just not a lot you can really do against that if you have a slow start. Um, so you don't want to be the mid range deck against a free four four on turn like four. It's just <laughs> not going to come out good in your favor. So. No. Yeah. It's especially bad when you get the free four four on turn three. And then swing it in on turn four. Oh. And JPH Snake admitted to uh, gambling, I think, with every deck that he should not run into Affinity. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the, he, he, he did say, he was like, oh, well, maybe I should include that from now on. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was, I mean, for a while there, at least on Goldfish, it was on the downswing. Um, yep. So... Uh, but it's kind of come back, I think, because it is an explosive deck. I mean, it really is. Like, it wins dramatically when it wins. So. Yeah, especially Beast Down. Also, it has nothing against Atog. It's like, right. oh, Atog. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah. What am I going to do? Like, what can you do against <laughs> Fling? You die. Yeah, you die. That's what you die. do against Fling. If you can't counter the Fling. Yeah, it's kind of over. Down, Beast Down seems to be lacking any ways to really do that thing. So. Yeah, it's a, Beast Down's philosophy is it has to overrun everything. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to overrun Atog. Yeah. The Dredge deck managed to uh, make him discard all the flings, but uh, there was still an army of 4 4 Yeah, I, uh, I think you're like, oh, hey... There's the, there's the fling. Oh well. <laughs> I, I I remember you you got a little bit of joy when the fling went into the yard, but then I was like, oh well. <laughs> it happened. Uh, I have to mention Exume Control as well, beating Hexproof, which is uh, one of its harder matchups. Yeah. Um, ag- again, if once you get that Exume. Just right, you know everything's great in the world. <laughs> and yes. another, the other thing about even hexproof. Okay, let's say they exhume one of their hexproof guys. Um, if you know if it has no, if they have no aura, more auras to put on it, all it is is a one one. Yeah. And the best thing they could hope to do would be an aura Narlid if you haven't already thrown their uh, all their other enchants into the yard. So. 
It's not. I don't know. I I, I say there that you can get you can get you can have some pretty good uh, pretty good runs against that, but if yeah, you are the unable to control, the they got out there though, then you run into the problem. I don't know that exhum control build though. It does have a lot of it has more strength really against hexproof than other exhum decks I've seen because yes. it does have the innocent bloods. Mm-hmm. It has the um, invicers justice. So I mean, it does have a stronger overall match against it, um, hexproof. Yeah. Um, so I really actually like. I had submitted way at the beginning a more just like all in exhum build, but you were like, I'm going to go with Exhum Control. And I actually, I think it's a stronger deck just because it has the control element um, to it, um, making it a more traditional, you know, like Demiri Control deck with that Exhum backup plan. Um, yep. So it's actually a much stronger deck than what I had submitted. So it's been actually really fun to watch it control a game and then play a free crusher. And then just take over the game from there because that's what that card does. So, yeah, really, really fun to watch. So, is that a JPS snake build? No, it's uh, David Schaffer. Okay, okay. I knew it was one of the two um, yeah. geniuses of the it's format. It's David's so. last pick in the gold yeah. yeah, no more. And it's awesome. It is an awesome deck. So, yeah, I think it's one of the top seeds to win now, actually. I could definitely see that. I mean, there's going to be a lot of decks that, okay, I'm going to one for one. Oh, and you're just going to get it immediately you back it with right your back. next exhum. So, um, which is really, you know, backbreaking in the format. So, right. And like I said, big mud drifters are a lot of fun too. <laughs> yeah, that's that's so disheartening. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was talking. I was talking to Sam earlier this evening about uh, my league match in Standard Popper and what killed me was only having one for one removal and going up against you know token generators and whatnot. It's it's similar. I mean there's no exhum in the current standard, thank God. But um, That's good. <laughs> yeah. But um, it's a similar effect. If you put out you know, if every card my opponent is putting out is producing two or more creatures and all I have is one for one removal. They don't care <laughs> because oh okay oh so I have a creature coming at you so. because you're getting a fraction of the card they played. Yeah, and let's yeah. go ahead. Let's name the card. It's Rise of Eagles. Yes, Rise, Rise of, of Eagles. Eagles is just such a it's a beaning um, yeah. for such an expensive spell. It really right. is so. Hey Dan, not to get off the gauntlet, but you played your standard. You played your standard league match. What did you play? <laughs> I played the uh, Iset Cruz with the uh, Flurry of Eagle, uh, the uh, Eagles card, and yeah, Flurry all Holt. all the token producers. Who, what did you play against? <laughs> the same deck. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so it's Andrew sixty one. Oh God, oh, it's my. such a boring mirror match. He must have just outdrawn you. Uh, he outdrew me in the first match. Yeah. In the first duel, then he outdrew me again, but I uh, sideboarded out all the bounds and brought in more creatures. Oh. I didn't have all the cards, so I had the sigiled starfish in it, mm-hmm. uh, which turned out to be pretty good. Uh, so I won the, the second duel, despite him having drawn like 10 cards more, because yeah. I counted his creatures and overrun him. And in the third duel, I never found the fourth land. Yeah, yeah, that's what he had put up when he reported the match, is that you stumbled on lands, and that's really hard to come back from. Yes, but uh, those cruises sure loved him. <laughs> it was <laughs> he was cruising all the time. Yeah. No, and the funny part about that deck is in the last two standard popper events, it's basically vanished. It, like, it came, it, like, did really good for, like, a week and a half, and it's gone. Oh, well, it looks yeah, super like, strong. But that, that I that, don't. That, that's that's the thing. I mean, we've, we've talked about it before. That that's just the nature of standard popper. Is you know you'll have something go come up strong for two weeks, and then everyone the next tournament after that is everyone trying to make their deck that beats it. And unfortunately, since there's such a small populace that uh, shows up every time, 
what you have is if you have only five people playing, and then those five people, if they do well or kind of well, they're like, okay, well, this time I'm going to um, make this deck that'll beat my deck. You know, the deck I played last time. Ha ha, that'll show them. But then it seems like there's a bit of a group think that goes on, and a lot of people do that. So, <laughs> yeah. so nobody plays the deck that's meant to be beat. Right. And it, that's hilarious. It was just like this time, uh, yeah, this time last year when it was just mono black, um, or the, the, uh, Demir Mill. Mill. When yeah. it was just those two decks, they, 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 for about four weeks, they were just solid nonstop. But then they just kind of went away for almost, for like, gosh, almost like six months. Because you know, I guess people get tired of playing it, or they just think that someone else is going to start playing it, so they look for something that'll beat it. It's a very, it's a very up and down format, standard popper. So I think it's surprisingly deep the format for such a small pool of cards. It, it yeah. is, and I, I mean, I tip my hat to Wizards on that because the commons in M15 were really strong. The commons and cons have been really strong. And then the heroic creatures out of Theros are insanely strong in the format, and so are the combat trips, tricks. Um, so really, that's really what has led to the current standard popper being way better than it was when it was Ravnica, Return to Ravnica, Theros. Yep. Um, because... There's themes to all the color combinations and so on, but none of them are mill. Um, <laughs> Yay, no mill. No mill. Spe- speaking about Theros, uh, yes. what do you think about Mono Red Heroic? Oh, I think it's the most Theros cards in one deck in the, pon- <laughs> uh, in the gauntlet. Um, it, it ran over elves. Yeah. Which is, I mean... Elves can have that explosive start, but it is kind of a mid-er, mid-er rangey deck, and Mono Red Heroic just eats like anything past turn four for breakfast. One, th- I mean, yeah. it is just a crazy fast deck when you're when you get a good draw. So yeah, the only it, it sort of makes me question all the dirtling, all the controlish cards in um, in goblins. Because it's like a re- a much faster Goblins deck. Right. Didn't uh, JPH Snake... Yeah, didn't he have one? You know, it had the Kirin Striker and a few other things. It was sort of Goblin-y, but it was more... That was David Schaffer. David Schaffer, okay. I, I couldn't remember who wrote it. But that, see, th- that, that kind of goes to what you're saying. Um, one of the things I think is endemic with Elf players is they're so, like, build the board, build the board, build the board, build the board. They always want to be dumping their hand over and over and over again. Even when I saw, I believe there were a couple of times in that match where had they attacked and just done their timber watch, I mean, you, you would have been hurting. But they didn't. Yes. They just kept building the board, building the board, building the board. I'm like, dude. I mean, one, I, one thing I that I, I can... didn't want you to lose, but, I mean, seriously, they, they really needed to be attacking more often than they did. One thing that I can say, though, you can't – when you look at goblins, you think this is an aggressive deck that's meant to win quick. And the goblins build in the gauntlet is really an example of that. But it's really – it plays, though, more towards the mid midrange um, yep. with the build that's in there. Yeah. And so people get confused about goblins. Goblins is far more consistent than mono red heroic. Um, yes. Like you could play a hundred matches with goblins and play a very similar match each time, but you could play a hundred matches with mono red heroic have a fraction of the win percentage because some games you're just not going to really get anywhere. Um, and I've been playing like a heroic red, white and blue deck in standard popper and the games I win are amazingly fast, and the games I lose, it's because I draw a creature and lands and no tricks, and I I just can't do anything. So, uh, so the mono red heroic build in the gauntlet actually changed a lot after round two, and uh, it it was the biggest change of any deck 
It's almost not an heroic deck anymore. He kept the cards in to be able to call it mono red heroic, but he really changed the name on the website to only one because it's just a lot of aggressive one drops. Right. Well, so it makes, it's, it's it barely sense. a heroic deck anymore. <laughs> when you when you actually look at the standard, the current standard mono red build, it's all one drops really. Um, so I think the change is probably was influenced by that because a lot of the cards in the build, um, the Denizen, mm-hmm. um, the Hoplite, the um, – what's the one that makes the 1-1 one, one haste tokens? The uh, Crusader. Crusader. The Crusader. They're all in the standard build yep. and they're all in the deck and mm-hmm. I mean – it's awesome to see a, just a regular standard deck that's fueled by commons like Titan Strength, um, and it really translates well to standard popper. And of course, it translates even better when you add like cards like Lightning Bolt and stuff to the mix in uh, popper. Twelve so. uh, one mana two twos. <laughs> yeah, all of yeah, that was insane. Like you were just dropping one mana two twos for days like i think in the second match you had three or four in your opening hand and yeah. you were just like one yeah. mana two two one mana two two one mana two two swing for six yep <laughs> and there's not a lot that a lot of decks oh, can do yeah. and you kept drawing the uh what's the uh, goblin that you have to play a creature card for him to attack yeah <laughs> yeah, you, you think you drew three in a row or something crazy or three yeah. variations yes. of the same thing i was like that's nuts. <laughs> and I mean, that's super tough, but when you don't get that type of draw, that's where just like straight goblins is, I think, just a lot stronger. So, Yeah, they're, they're two very different decks. Oh, yeah, right. definitely. Definitely. Um, yeah, the difference between goblins being fast, but more on the mid-range side versus if you get to like, if you get to stabilize against the heroic deck there's not a ton that they can do to really stop you from doing that. So true. Uh, we have to talk about a few more winners. We have gray Mercs. Oh yeah. That, uh, went into the Delver grinder, but came out on top. I think, I think as far as, uh, rogue builds go, since I picked beast down, um, I hope I don't, um, curse it, but I'm going to pick, I'm picking gray Mercs. <laughs> you would never think the fact that wizards put so many double black casting costs on those mercenary cards <laughs> back in mask blocks as like a detriment, making gray the gray merchants so much better now. Oh, I know. Yeah, exactly. Um, and because... not only that, but they can search up more <laughs> black mana symbols, and so it's just like. It's the perfect, like, overlap of bad cards that fuel one of the stronger cards. Um, So it's really awesome to see the deck perform. I think we got uh, some benefit from the Delver player not knowing what was going on either because he definitely counterspelled the wrong things. So when I could get into the Grey Merchant. (laughs) He played a Spell Spatter Sprite incorrectly. At one point, oh, twice. where he, did he it didn't twice. have, yeah, yeah, I just remember the one where he didn't have another fairy on board. Uh, and no. Dan was like, I don't think he understands how <laughs> that card works. Was well, that the Great Marks match? Okay. Yeah. 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 So yeah. that was just yeah, like he, a. He played out a fairy. It's like, um, this is a two mana cost. <laughs> yeah. He did it and twice. that was just hilarious. So. Uh, but, I mean, some people, you know, some people just, like, you know, he might have just picked the deck up and tried to figure it out, so. In the tournament yep. practice room. <laughs> I still <laughs> remember my nicer. first Delver match, and I failed to, I didn't understand how to untap the lands with the Cloud of Fairies. Uh, <laughs> so that yeah. didn't go very well. That happens to me every time I play Popper. Or, I play, um, <laughs> I play Familiars. Every time I play Familiars, I screw up the untap at least one time. At least <laughs> one time, I for, I click past it. I don't. I target tapped or untapped lands. 
I always mess it up at least one time, so it's hilarious every time I play it. So it's especially bad in familiars to do that mistake. <laughs> oh yeah, because it can literally end your game. Yep. Just doing it once. So <laughs> uh, yeah. another deck that ran into a very hard matchup was uh, Azorius Kitty, the Power T version. It ran into elves. Yeah. Uh, but it came through, and there is a very interesting discussion in that video about the sideboard plan, because people didn't agree with the Power T sideboard plan, but it was the sideboard plan that uh, that won the match. Huh. Right. And I, I have actually watched the video, but I've not read, went back and read the comments, so uh, it's I interesting would go back and look through the comments. He takes out the Lone Missionary, for example, Yeah. and people were like, oh, you have to keep Lone Missionary in. But um, turns out the low missionary doesn't do a whole lot against the elves. So, I mean, why would you keep it in? It's four life and it's two one for two mana. Right. But the yes. question is, what do you bring in? Uh, <laughs> Holy light, of course, but also a lot of spot removal. Right. For g- getting the timber watches. Yeah, you, you don't want you don't want timber watch. I mean, it, it gets annoying when, you, when you're facing a whole horde of elves. But when each one of the when any number of those elves can become fourteen fourteens, yeah, you want to take bad. out Temple Watch as soon as you can. Oh yeah, yeah. That's, that's and Asorius Kitty assembles a lot of crap on the table as well. Uh, so as long yep. as there is no Timber Watch, you could mm-hmm. theoretically at least uh, keep blocking a long while. Oh, and yeah. then you get your Mall Drifters into play, and you start to go over their heads, and you win. So until yeah. the, at least until that's have, the dream, the, right? Until so. they have the uh, spider armor, spider stuff. Oh, armor. card's so annoying. <laughs> yeah, but you can reality test that. Oh, that's true. Very true. So my big question in the match was: Do I use spreading seas on his lands or not? Because if I can keep him off green, it's worth it. But if I can't keep him off green, I'm really helping him with spreading seas. Right, he he needs the distant melody, and also the Quarian Ranger can just send that particular land back to his hand, and yes. it doesn't matter. Or wait, can it? Does it have to be a forest? And if that turns it to an island, then he can't. No, he can't. Right? No, he can't. Yeah, that's right. He can do it in response to uh, spreading seas, of course. Yeah, in response. But once you've spread it, well, he needs blue anyway. So, hmm, that's a tough call. Yeah, it was really tough, but uh, we came out on top. Uh, Delver Fiend uh, totally crushed uh, Issa Control. And uh, we have eight straight dual wins for Delver Fiend. Now with one Treasure Cruise. Oh, yeah. And, but, and at, he... at, per, uh, <laughs> per, per the demand of Far for sure. <laughs> yes. One and Treasure it... Cruise, three gush. Isn't Delver Fiend just really kind of designed to beat a deck that wants to make its first play on, like, turn three? Yes. I mean, yeah. I mean, Delver Fiend is just, that's just its bread and butter. Um, so um, not not a huge, huge, gigantic shock there. I mean. But I think it's an amazing build. The Delver Fiend deck? Oh yes. yeah, no, it's a great build that you're running. Um, so, uh, so I think we only have one deck left to talk about that played in round four. Um, I might be mistaken, but it is my favorite deck by far in the Gauntlet. The deck I have the most fun with. You know what I speak. The. Uh... Uh, one man spy? No, no, no. <laughs> no way. <laughs> one land Glass spies, cannon uh, red? No, no, they are gone. Yeah. I know. I'm joking. Hmm. Teachings? Uh, teaching is um, uh, not fun, but uh, <laughs> right. interesting. Oh, I find teachings incredibly fun to play. But then again, I'm a control player at heart, so... Oh, mono, oh so mono black <laughs> land destruction. <laughs> yes, I am a land destruction yeah. player at heart. <laughs> yeah, uh, seeing seeing you play those and um, tinkering with it myself a little bit, I kind of want to. I kind of want to buy it in paper. Yep. I, I, I like it a lot. 
This is an example of a brewer who has worked a lot on his deck. Yeah. So um, some of the cards, I feel like, what what is this card doing here? But he he, I've asked him, and he has great answers, like the Basilica creature. Yeah. Was it Negator who submitted that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I catch him playing that constantly, yeah. constantly playing that, and he is just like a master at playing it too. So, um, it is his like main deck i believe um so yeah he's great with it and it just catches people completely off guard um because like (laughs) a a lot of the rest of the format isn't really about blowing up lands so like you lose a couple lands and a lot of these decks are so land light to begin with Right. It's just a huge setback. And one of so. my, my favorite of his last comments were, I think this would run smoother if it had four strip mines and four sinkholes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think okay. most decks would. Yeah. No joke. <laughs> and, um, it's yeah. interesting the way it can switch. into Because land, there was a land destruction deck in the last gauntlet as well, a red-green one. Yep. But once you run into a deck that is... Too fast for land destruction, you just die. Right. But this deck switches into a mono black control mono black deck. Control, take out all land destruction, bring in all the other spells. And yeah, which is very good against the fast decks. Right. So, isn't the fifth? Isn't the sideboard thirteen unique cards? Uh, I think so. Yeah, here I, I got it up here. There is a lot of thought in that sideboard. Oh yeah, that's the sideboard plan. I need to print it out memorize it or something <laughs> because yeah it, it it's awesome here i got it down here he has really been thinking about everything mono black land destruction 14 just the conclusion cards. that one stink with imp and one basilica creatures are much better than two gray merchants <laughs> it's, it's I'll, fascinating i'll go with him on that i i mean <laughs> they're definitely lower on the curve Yep. And that's really, I think, really helpful. I mean, the bottom line is if you're not generating a lot of black mana symbols, Gary's not super great. On the other hand, I mean, he's playing the witches. He's playing the chittering rats. Yeah, you have the four witches, four rats, four ragers. Yep. I, and I they are know. good at uh, finding more land destruction spells or just... Oh, it's crazy. ...keeping the board under control while you destroy the lands. I and actually, I mean... I, I made the mistake. I thought that... Because when I was looking at his build, I kept saying, well, if, if this isn't so good, I was like, why doesn't he have Reign of Tears? I was like, oh, it's uncommon. Oops. <laughs> at, <laughs> at first I was kind of going, oh, man, you know, if you do Reign of Tears, you're never, you never worry about... Um, whether or not the land is a swamp. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. I should have uh, looked into that a little more before I <laughs> spouted my... He head. has been having trouble with burn, but uh, I think it has a fairly decent matchup against most things. Right. If a, yeah, if a deck can survive on like one or two lands, kind of like you know burn, then ugh, you're going to be hard-pressed. But it's done good so far. Yeah. Uh, did we talk about every deck that played in round four? I believe hmm. that we have... Yeah, in some manner. At this point. Yeah. Do you want me to go through the list of the decks that are still in? Yeah, let's give that a read through real quick for the good peoples. Boros Kitty. Awesome. Delver Fiend. Yep. Five color green. <laughs> Five color green. Goblins. Goblins. Mono blue control. Stompy. Stompy. I'm Affinity. Hearing, <laughs> I'm hearing a lot of tier, top tier decks <laughs> making it. Through. Yeah, I started uh, at the top. Yeah. Uh, Sorry, Kitty. Yep. Burn. Burn. Exhume control. Mm hmm. Familiars, which might be the number one seed, actually. Familiars is crazy. Green it's one. Crazy good. 
Band Presents, uh, Bugs and Pigs, Crazy Outsider, Devil Children, Teachings, Green Grifters, Grey Mercs, Grey Mercs, Manaburn, Manaburn, very interesting. Mono Black Land Destruction. Also pretty awesome. <laughs> and then my second favorite fun deck of the Gauntlet, Mono Blue Artifacts. Mono Blue Artifacts. Crazy good. That was that was actually my second pick. I might, um, depending on how some of my friends deal with uh, Mono Black Land Destruction, I might end up buying the uh, the uh, Mono Blue Artifacts just to produce Golem after Golem after Golem. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Uh, mono red ping is still in. Uh, mono red heroic. Uh, yep. Persistently undying. You have to kill it four times to get it to go away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Project X. Uh, the rebels. The rebels. And yep. torture toolbox. So. That's it. That wow. is awesome. Um, so basically, when you read that list, what I hear is top tier decks. Yep. And really the stronger side of the roguey Bruce. Yep. Yep. Uh, yeah. We have another undefeated deck that hasn't lost a duel, and it's a uh, green one. Green one is very strong. Green like, one no is. No matter how you slice it. Green one is crazy good. Um, I actually, between the two mono green decks that are left, I think green one actually might have the edge over Stompy in the long run. Um, and I wasn't really familiar with it before the this popper gauntlet started, so um, it, it's sort of like goblins. It. It's sort of like goblins and the mono red heroic. Green one is much more all in, right? Um, because that's the one. Was that Deloxicoif designed yes. it so he could play in dailies and win in right. like three minutes and then go do chores yeah, then go do in between chores. rounds? <laughs> like yeah, any so. Deloxicoif deck. Right. Yeah, so I mean, it is it is an amazingly you know, well designed deck. Well. So, but it's much faster than the regular Stompy deck. Yeah, I found another undefeated deck. Which one? Eight wins, zero losses for Burn. Oh, Burn. Yeah, well, that's that does not surprise me. People people are starting to really dislike Burn. I guess it, it's com- almost completely taken over Modern um, yes. recently. Um, so, like, people want to set Burn on fire at this point. <laughs> um, it's even stronger in this format. It just has access to... Uh, a lot more crazy tools, so... Right. But there's also a lot of burn hate, so if you really want to beat burn, you can. Yeah, I mean, if you want to pack some cop whites, or cop reds... Oh, I think devil children would run over burn like nothing, for example. Yeah, devil children does have a lot of redundancy as far as life gain goes, so that's really part of the reason you want to try to play the deck, even though every time you've won with it, you've just won as a kind of a white weenie beater deck. So that's been yeah. really fun to watch. So, Or Asorius Kitty also has a great burn matchup. And you would think Boris Kitty would um, with the recurring of the crossroads and then I put Lone yep. Missionaries back in the sideboard to help out. So, Yes. So I think burn uh, burn is quite inconsistent, and I'm really surprised it has gotten this far, and even more surprised that it hasn't lost the duel. <laughs> yeah, you would have thought at least something would have come up against it, but yeah. nope. There it is. Five color green is eight one. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. What is Project X right now? What do you say? Project X. Uh, that's, that's a good A1 question. Too. I didn't look that far down the list. It is also eight one. Yeah, I thought it had only lost one duel um, yeah. so far. So um, it has done really good, either comboing out or just being a a pretty solid 
kind of two color deck. Like it is a really solid two color beat deck. So um, another very well designed deck that was Dom. Yes. Yeah. So even though he, I don't think he's really around anymore. Um, I definitely tip my hat to his crazy idea of Project X. So. Yeah, he he is focusing on school and uh, family and stuff. Right. I talk to him like Ooh. every six months, trying family. to get back his sexy Austrian accent to the channel. <laughs> Which is completely understandable. I mean, sometimes you have to put magic on the back burner for other important things. Um, but yeah. he did leave behind a legacy, and that legacy is sacrificing a thing to another thing to put a counter on a thing and then put a yeah. counter on another thing. So. Either go infinitely large or gain infinite life. Yes. So. I am satisfied at uh, how much I managed to attract David Schaffer to watch the, uh, watch the gauntlet. He is studying to be a lawyer, so he doesn't have a lot of time. <laughs> oh, but man, when you get him excited about in some comments... Yeah. yeah, I like it. <laughs> he writes an article. And it's exactly. Shh, shh, no, no, no. Shh, don't, don't say that. Don't say that. Don't, we don't, we don't, don't want jinx it. Stop. it. Yeah, don't we jinx don't it. want it to stop. We don't want to stop, Dan. Uh, okay. So I published one of his comments as an article on MTG Library because yeah. it was that good. <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> yeah. Uh, JPH Snake as well. He's like uh, studying and working and uh, he's doing like biochemistry, I think. But, yeah, he, uh, he, he was... He, he was in Houston the other day for a conference. We were real close, but I, I you know, it was, it's still Houston. Even though it's so close, it's still four hours away for me. Yeah. I, I wanted to, uh, it would have been cool to go hang out with him, but just too far. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if anybody hasn't done that, you should watch uh, King of the Nerds Season 2 to see JPH Snake yeah. have a great run at being a nerd. <laughs> Oh, and he went in with some strategy, and most people seem to just be kind of winging it. Yeah. Yeah, no. He knew what he was he doing. He was um, very, uh, very nerdy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and I don't, know if, I don't know if you saw the previews, but in between, well, like sometimes in between the commercials, they do a preview of the show you're watching, but I guess just to keep you interested and not change the channel. Yes. They had, they had him do some things, like say, nerdy pickup lines and whatnot. Oh, my God. It was... Yeah, I saw that. Those were, those were awesome. <laughs> M- much love, Jack. Much love coming at you. Uh, the fact that we are now still with more decks than we have in round two uh, last year and um, makes me consider how long this will be going on because um, last year we went to round nine. Yeah. So now we are... Three rounds ahead, so we are actually going to get to the to the tournament rounds, I think, and we'll have like three or four decks left. You will have to put in a lot of a lot of time if you're going to yeah, run it in the tournament <laughs> and tickets. Okay, right. so last week I think we all kind of went. What do you think the winner is going to be? So yeah. this week I thought. What do you think the final four is going to be? I live in basketball country, college basketball country. Um, I'm a Jayhawks fan. Um, I'm from Lawrence, Kansas. Um, so the final four is always a big deal. So, Dan, what do you think the last four decks are going to be? I think the last four decks will be Exhume Control, Familiars, uh, Teachings, if I can pl- play it correctly, and uh, Five Color Green. Okay, Brennan. I also think Exhume, uh, Familiars, I'm going with Grey Mercs, and Delverfiend. All right, I'm going to go Boris Kitty, Familiars, Teachings, and the Mono Blue Artifact deck. Ooh. Because Infinite Golems <laughs> at instant speed... Seem like a real handle to deal with, a handful to deal with. I think they're going to be, I think that puts that deck kind of gives it an edge. So I think it's hard forward. to evaluate Mono Blue Artifacts matchups. I still don't really understand what the good matchups and the bad matchups are. Yeah. We, we did lose in the preliminary rounds against uh, that crazy morph deck, but that doesn't tell us anything. Because 
where that crazy morph duck hasn't showed back up. No. Ever. So. I could, yeah, I couldn't even. Other than I remember us talking about it being a morph deck, and I remember seeing crazy morphs, I I couldn't tell you a thing about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, you could argue Mono Blue Artifacts should have a decent control matchup, should have a decent mid-range matchup, probably dead to familiars. Uh, but what about aggro? I'm not sure. Hmm. I think it depends on how long you can hold them off. Without... And Delver, of course, must be a nightmare. Right. Oh, well. Ah, I'm still picking it. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's fine. Yep. So, but I think, I mean, two of my decks are Fringe, Boros Kitty, Artifacts, and then two of them I think are really strong contenders, Teachings, and Familiars. Um, so, even though none of us are named Obzin. <laughs> so. That's okay. I think after December 8th, uh, we will probably have to have a Christmas break, but after December 8th, we can go into uh, weekly rounds. I got gotcha. you. So oh. how far away is that? Three weeks. So, right. yeah, maybe we'll have weekly rounds uh, in the middle of December then. So perhaps start round seven on uh, well, the 15th. Hmm. Yeah. And then things will go faster. Is round seven when the two men start, or is that round eight? Oh, that's round thirteen or something. Oh, yeah, that's, good lord! That's okay, forget out. it. Okay, so we're far, far away from that. Yeah. So. Yes. I think we should lose ten decks in round five, but uh, there was a, a crazy round. I think it was round four or something uh, last year when we only lost one deck. What percentage of decks did you lose in round four? Uh, I think round four, uh, this uh, this year, yeah. uh, we lost uh, 16, 27 remained in. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think it was 27, 16. Okay. And then in the first round of the first popper gauntlet? It was uh, 24, 23, I think. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay, yeah. so you did a lot better. <laughs> so it's hard to predict. <laughs> yeah. That there's it looks like, very grim at points, but you turned it around. I mean, you started with the good win run, and you ended with the good win run, and then it was a little rocky in the middle there. So, so definitely a good round. So, the, I should win more the further we get down as the decks become better, but I haven't really seen that effect. <laughs> of <laughs> course, in the very last rounds last year, we had a lot of wins. Right. When we were down to like 10 decks. Yeah, for yeah. a while there, near the end, I was like, this may never actually finish. <laughs> right. I thought the same thing. So, I was like, man, you were going to be going on forever and ever. And then I kind of feel like we're going to hit that point this year, too, where there's like 12 really strong decks left. And then they're going to start getting eliminated on this kind of fluky losses. Um,. And so we but get down still, to if, like, they are, if they are if they're eighty percent against the field, we still lose like two or three decks every round. Then, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's because inevitable. you're still going to occasionally run into run into a bad matchup, get a bad mana draw. So yep. it's still, I mean, there's still always going to be kind of attrition, um, because that's just the nature of the beast. But um, I think, yeah, we're going to get to the point where it's distilled the best decks and you're just going to end up playing like 500 matches <laughs> overall. Yeah, 500 I think I'll get to. Yeah. Because <laughs> <Nope. laughs> we're in round four and you've already played uh, halfway there, right? So... Hmm. Have I played... Uh, I think I played 270? Yeah. Yep. Oh my I'll only get 400 then. Yeah, hmm. no, that can't be right. It's going to be over 400. But it's, it's, it's quickly really fading gonna, up. Right, yeah. It, it, we're getting some dramatic drop-offs now. 30 plus 15 plus... Yeah, it's hard to get to 130. 
more matches. Wow. It's still an insane, a completely insane amount of popper <laughs> being played by one <laughs> yes. one Swedish man. <laughs> the, the lone Swede. Off in the distance. Actually, I, 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 it's sort of like two phases to the gauntlet. We have the massive grind at the start, and I increased that uh, by intent this year. And then we have like the phase we enter now when the number of matches we've actually, actually probably played them three fourths of the matches already. Uh, and I'm considering making the third round uh, single elimination in the just for fun room next year. To oh, even increase it. the grind. <laughs> oh, wow. that, would, that would keep more of them in. <laughs> yeah. wow. wow, that would extend okay. things by another like probably a hundred matches or something like that. Yeah, it should be about, you know, depending on the number of decks done. But in this case, it'd probably be like, uh, it would have been 60 more matches probably. Yeah. So that would be insane. Yeah. And I'm, I'm trying to uh, like relax this week during the vote back, but I'm itching to play Pauper. Yeah. Yeah. It, we can tell that you're trying. We can tell you're trying to relax as you're secretly putting up practice videos on the other channel. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so it's the black land destruction. Right. It seems very relaxing as you continue to play Popper. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, Dan, I know you've got a you got things going on, so let's go ahead and I guess wrap up this particular episode, everybody. Okay. So let's go ahead and everybody don't forget about going to the site. That's right, folks. MagicGatheringStrat.com. Also, same thing on Twitter. Magic Gath Strat. Go there. As you can see, I put mine and Sam's uh, Twitter handle up there. Cerulean says hi is my Twitter and Sam is SPO7677. Also, Facebook slash Magic Gathering Strat. Please like and subscribe. Dan has more gauntlet coming up. It's a vote back. Do not forget the vote back. It's the link in the show notes. So however you consume this product, go to the show notes. It'll be there. Okay. Well, I guess that is it for today. Um, so, for... The Standard Popper Show. I'm Brennan. And I'm Sam, and I love Treasure Cruise. I am Don. I want to play Pauper. <laughs> we, need to, we need to feed that beast. Anyway, thanks for watching The Standard Popper Show. Standard Popper Show. Hi, guys. <laughs> <laughs> It's the Standard Papa Show.